Welcome to Science with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover symbiotic relationships. So let's start off with what that means. Symbiotic relationships are close, long-term relationships between two different species. Symbiosis comes from the Greek words that mean living together, so that makes sense. We are going to discuss three types of symbiotic relationships, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. And we're going to start with mutualism. In a mutualistic relationship, both species benefit. Our example is the relationship between bees and flowers. So how do both of these species benefit? Well, the bee gets the nectar they need from the flowers and they use it to make honey. Bees travel from flower to flower collecting that nectar. As they travel between the flowers, bees collect pollen on their bodies. And then as they continue to travel, they spread that pollen between the flowers. This helps the flowers reproduce. So the bees get nectar and the flowers get pollinated. Both species benefit. Next, we have commensalism. Commensalism means that one species benefits and the other is unaffected for the most part. They are not helped or harmed. Basically, one benefits and the other doesn't care. For our example, we have cattle egrets and any type of grazing animal or cattle like a cow, zebra, or even elephants. The cattle egrets follow the grazing animals around as they graze. The grazing animal, let's say a cow, stirs up insects that hide in the grass. This makes finding and eating insects much easier for the cattle egrets. The cattle egrets benefit from this and the grazing animal is unaffected. I do want to mention that there are instances of cattle egrets directly removing ticks and other parasites from cattle. Cattle egrets may sit on the back of a grazing animal and benefit them by taking care of those ticks and parasites. In this case, the relationship would become mutualistic because the grazing animal is benefiting from the cattle egret and the cattle egret is benefiting from the um, cattle or grazing animal. So there can be some debate when it comes to commensalism and it may not be as clear cut sometimes as mutualism and parasitism. And lastly, we have parasitism. So in this relationship, one species benefits and the other is harmed. For our example, we have a mosquito and a human. The mosquito benefits by sucking blood, which female mosquitoes are the ones that suck the blood. They use the nutrition from the blood in order to make eggs. Male mosquitoes eat plant nectar. So in this relationship between the female mosquito and the human, the human is harmed. They're having their blood sucked and mosquitoes can also transmit diseases. So this has a negative impact on the human or whatever the host species may be. So that's our example of parasitism. So to finish off, we're going to go through three more examples and determine if they're mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism. So up top, we have a mistletoe and a host tree. Mistletoe uses its roots to attach to trees and absorbs the tree's nutrients. The mistletoe is benefiting and the tree can be harmed slash negatively affected. So this is an example of parasitism. Next, we have a giraffe and an oxpecker. The oxpecker is sitting on top of the giraffe's head in our example picture here. The oxpecker eats ticks and other parasites on the giraffe, so it benefits from being on the giraffe. Now, the giraffe benefits because the ticks and other parasites are taken care of. So both species benefit, and this is going to be mutualism. Um, lastly, we have a spider and a spider web. Now, the spider web is on the tree, right? So the spider has a home with that tree. It's benefiting from the tree. The tree is unaffected. So one species benefits the spider and the other is unaffected, the tree. So this is commensalism. So there you have it. There are the symbiotic relationships, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.